So um, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for logging in tonight and attending this men's health webinar. I know there's an ongoing uh, Seahawks game tonight. And uh, so we're going to try to make this as interesting as possible to make it worth your time in, in attending this um, webinar. Um, I'm Dr. John Benedict Cabano, I'm the director of the Vasectomy Center in Men's Health. I'm a board certified family medicine physician. And uh, uh, I think I am the uh, uh, current, um, currently I am um, in, in the men's health field and uh, uh, I guess I'm very excited to present the men's health update today, which is, uh, I think, a very important in the current climate, um, healthcare climate um, currently. Uh, just a quick background. I grew up with three brothers and, and grew up in an all boys Catholic school. So men's health has always been an important um, aspect of medicine that I've been interested in. Uh, we have found that it is poorly focused on in, in the past and, and even during my medical education, it wasn't quite um, given the, the, the same um, um, focused uh, as uh, other aspects of medicine. So um, today I really just want to focus on two things, right? I want to focus on low testosterone, uh, which is You've, you guys have heard a lot about this uh, uh, from the media and online, and also male sexual dysfunctions. This includes erectile dysfunctions, premature ejaculations, uh, low libido, and also um, anorgasmia or failure to have an or orgasm. Um, so uh, just a quick presentation in terms of uh, why men's health is very important. I think you, you'll find that during this talk, you'll my goal is to kind of illustrate why low testosterone and male sexual dysfunction kind of ties into the overall health of the individual and the way I've approached this in patients. Um, men's health has been poorly recognized globally. Um, uh, it's not been fo the focus in terms of healthcare policies. Um, men have been shown to live shorter than women. Uh, they they are more prone to smoking, alcohol use, recreational drug use. They don't eat as healthy as women. Um, they eat a lot of processed meats, and especially they present late uh, in terms of mental health uh, to their provider. And so by that time, we have PTSD, aggressiveness, relationship issues, which compounds both uh, the, the quality of life of, of men and also their overall health. Uh, this graph, uh, basically the bar on the left represents uh, women uses, usage of healthcare services and the bar on the right represents male uh, usage of healthcare. As you can see around the ages of 15 to 45, they're, they're really very minimal use of healthcare by men and um, uh, versus, compared to women anyway. Um, we, Men usually attend uh, or consult their doctors whenever they have symptoms, uh, whether uh, it, when there's something wrong or um, if their partners, such as girlfriends or wives, bring them to the doctors. Uh, th this is one of the most common um, things I'll find when, when a guy comes in when they're 15 to 45. They they'll always say, hey, my mom, my girlfriend, my wife brought me in. Um, told me I needed to get checked, and and so I'm here, right here. So um, sometimes we will we'll find things that they've never considered. I try to make sure that it's worth their time when they they come and see me, um, and so we 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 talk about everything outside, you know, from lifestyle, from diet, uh, from any conditions, any questions they have about healthcare. Um, I really take advantage of that. Um, uh, amount of finite amount of time uh, since they don't go see the doctor as, quite as often. Um, so first off, what is low testosterone or what is testosterone, right? So testosterone, uh, we hear this word thrown around uh, all the time and it's a male sex hormone regulated by the, by the brain 
basically the hypothalamus and pituitary. Uh, they regulate this. Uh, they tell the testes how much testosterone is to be made. And the testosterone goes around the body. It, it helps uh, develop the traits of male, what we consider as male traits anyway, the sexual function, their features, their muscle mass. Um, they, it increases the red uh, blood cells bone density, and also the sense of well-being. So testosterone is very important to men. Um, it, gener it is present in low amounts of women, but this is uh, generally uh, helps with the development of the, the male, maleness traits. So, um, and so, you know, the benefits of having your testosterone optimized, you have a sharper mind, you're confident, uh, your 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 bone density, you have the energy and your libido and your, and your erections, and then also a healthy heart. So, um, when just one point here, optimal testosterone. That is the key word here. Not too much testosterone. As too much testosterone can also lead to negative effects, such as uh, increased clotting, um, increasing risk for cardiovascular disease, increasing aggressiveness. Um, so, so sometimes they, this can also lead to um, unfavorable effects. So, um, and also can affect to increase um, body fat. So if you're not working out, if you're sedentary or you're, um, the amount of testosterone you're not using, this will be converted to estrogen and later to fat. And so uh, some individuals can look very stocky and very bulky. And this generally is not favored anyway, in the current society. But um, so optimal is key uh, at, in, in this day. Uh, so testicular deficiency, it's been a, a well-established significant medical condition. Um, there's a bunch of possible causes. And uh, in fact, testicular de deficiency can be a sign of an underlying health problem. So Throughout this talk, we're going to talk about how all these conditions kind of relate to the overall health of the male individual. And that's why it's very important as a provider, as a family practice provider and um, uh, a doctor to, to, to listen to my patients and also kind of tie it in to the overall health of the individual. Um, so why does low testosterone matter and what are, what can we do about it? So um, uh, low testosterone is basically uh, considered a general indicator of men's health, right? Uh, it, can, it can tell me that an individual is, can possibly have increased stress. So stress produces a lot of cortisol levels, which can decrease your testosterone levels in the body. Um, it can also represent uh, it could be a sign of sleep apnea. Now, sleep apnea is very interesting as sometimes just correcting the sleep apnea uh, can correct your testosterone levels. And, and so we'll go more in depth with that uh, because uh, testosterone, when we're replacing testosterone, we want to make sure that you don't have sleep apnea as testosterone can worsen sleep apnea. And so if you have severe sleep apnea, you're basically you know, digging yourself a hole by, you know, getting testosterone. So it's really important that we, we evaluate for sleep apnea. I know it's one of them, whenever I talk to patients about it, they, they don't expect me to bring it up, um, which is um, uh, because it's not, you know, a well-known uh, cause of low testosterone um, to the general public anyway. So medications, we always review your medications, anything, uh, whether it's uh, prescribed or Lifestyle medications such as alcohol or cannabis, sometimes that those can really decrease your testosterone. And so uh, a person who's seeking low, uh, replace, testosterone replacement but brings a lot of alcohol or are on medications that can lower uh, testosterone, uh, sometimes we have to reevaluate those as, as there are risk with anything we take or prescribe to patients. That being said, um, there are some medications that patient definitely needs uh, uh, for a general condition. And so each case is going to be different. And so we look at each case differently and make sure that um, we arrive in, in, in a general consensus where a, a, a reasonable treatment with testosterone for, for patients who qualify 
uh, uh, low, low testosterone. Now, you could have organ failures like kidney or liver diseases that could cause low testosterone. And so low testosterone could be the first uh, sign. And so we, we evaluate for those, testicular trauma, inflammation, if you have genetic issues. If once you rule these all out, then we have we go through true hypogonadism or idiopathic, meaning um, if it's lower than the natural um, uh, uh, expected value of your testosterone, that's when we treat. Um, given that the patient has symptoms, if the patient doesn't have symptoms, regardless if we check your testosterone, if you do not have symptoms, generally uh, treatment with low uh, with testosterone is not. Um, indicated as, again, all, all medications have effect and side effects, as, um, as everybody knows. So, uh, so it, it's been studied that low androgen levels or low testosterone can lead to diabetes. It, it, it decreases your metabolism, it increases insulin resistance, increases your cholesterol, inflammation, you can, you know, your vascular stiffness. So all of these factors can increase your cardiovascular risk factors. So, and this, so this is where the, there's a bell-shaped curve where if you have too little testosterone, that can lead to um, uh, increased morbidity or mortality, actually worsening of your health, right? But in, 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 and so when we're treating, however, if you already have heart disease or clotting or clotting, uh, blood clotting um, issues, we do not want to uh, uh, increase those. So really finding the middle ground. Um, I find that the pendulum swings both ways, uh, depending on, you know, information online and, 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 and the media. So I think, you know, this talk is, um, I'm actually very thankful for IR, from our, um, IRG for, coordinating some of this community education. I think it's very important that we kind of distill some of this information and really kind of gather all this um, information and kind of not, not just get a consensus or a summary of all, all the studies that are out there. So, um, so tes testosterone diagnostics, usually uh, there's no universal uh, lower limit for testosterone levels. There, there are different lab, lab, laboratory tests. There's no lab test, not to kind of go um, too in depth in this, however, but there's different tests on how to, to test your testosterone, different equipment, but uh, generally around lower than 300 to 350 is what we consider in my practice as low testosterone. So if you have an, a number that's lower than 350 or 300 to 350, uh, there's a leeway there, uh, and you have fatigue and low libido or erectile dysfunction, we generally um, uh, diagnose you with uh, testosterone deficiency. Granted uh, that, you know, you don't have any uh, testosterone usage uh, that's non-clinical testosterone usage. If you have other sources of testosterone uh, that's not prescribed, sometimes that can temporarily lower your testosterone. So, I get an individual who's like built, very muscular, very uh, very manly, um, and uh, um, presents with a low level in their labs. Uh, generally, that's a temporary decrease in their testosterone level given to by um, exogenous or what we call um, usage of testosterone outside of the clinics. Um, so. Uh, measurement of your testosterone, very much more accurate, basically from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. And so it's really important that when you're presenting for your lab tests uh, that you present in the morning um, as it fluctuates more so throughout the day. And you'll hear different providers talk about free testosterone, bioavailable, and total testosterone. Um, in reality, total testosterone is really what we're looking for, as this represents 100% of the functional testosterone. Sometimes you could have, and this, are, this is more of a sometimes, I think that's the, the key word there, rather, versus the majority where total testosterone is what we check. Sometimes you have, you find an obese patient with 
some metabolic issues. Sometimes they're the protein that binds testosterone is low, and so that's when we 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 order uh, other labs such as the free testosterone and bioavailable testosterone. So, um, uh, so generally we do depend on the total testosterone. So anyone um, who, who any information that you have regarding free and bioavailable, those are more of the exception or or more rare cases or, or occasional cases. Um, my criteria for replacement, generally less than 300, 350. They have to be symptomatic. Uh, our screening questionnaire should be positive. With low libido, fatigue, poor musculature, um, definitely no heart disease. As I said, uh, testosterone treatment, whether it's um, it can increase clotting and also cardiovascular uh, mortality. And so um, the replacement, the risk versus benefits doesn't quite measure up. So you don't really want to be treating them uh, with testosterone, um, even though they have um, <clears throat> symptoms of, of, of low libido. Definitely explore other um, treatment options if in that case. So um and so how do we treat it most importantly is to treat the underlying factors first so the causes sleep apnea yeah you, do they have um uh thyroid issues do they have uh you know testicular issues they have a tumor you know so so um Treating these underlying factors first versus uh, just going in, in treating right away is is paramount, and so and that's why you know men's health. This this talk is really important. Um, treatment with low ter testosterone includes intramuscular injections. This can be given anywhere from two weeks. Sometimes we we we've, we've done a weekly injections. We've done monthly. <clears throat> Generally, two weeks works a little bit better. Um, uh, the, the only thing is you have to go to the clinic. Uh, I know in the last two years, we've, we've educated patients on how to inject the testosterone um, directly uh, uh, themselves. So um, that's something that we've, uh, and with success, I, so far I haven't had any issues with that. Um, patches can work. Sometimes the absorption kind of depends on the, where you place it in your skin. If the, the skin is very thick or if you place it in, on a lesion, sometimes uh, it can disrupt the absorption rate. Uh, testosterone gels that you can apply usually in the groin area. Um, but again, absorption can differ. And also sometimes it can transfer to a partner whenever you have skin to skin contact. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. Pellets uh, are used. Uh, usually applied uh in so they it's it's a procedure where um you implant the pellets underneath the skin around every two to six months absorption is, is differs uh definitely and so there's a lot of variability in absorption depending on your fat and muscle content so not as predictable as well so definitely intravascular intramuscular or im injections is still my uh go-to when it comes to um uh Treatment, however, if you have fear of needles, we generally consider the other treatments with, you know, some caveats. Oral treatments, generally not favored in the market nowadays. I, I know there, I think the there's a new medication coming in back in the market that has, uh, has shown a better absorption compared to the older th oral testosterone treatment. So um, I, I don't have the data for that quite yet. I know the safety data is still being studied. Uh, and they're generally expensive. Um, but just to let you know, the older oral supplements for testosterone replacement has not been generally shown to be as effective or as safe as, as the other options that we presented. So on non-medication treatments, uh, it's kind of funny because uh, when I was doing my research, you know, I, I also saw some Websites claiming, you know, um, uh, dietary uh, uh, diets that can increase your testosterone. Um, they're not entirely false, right? So it, it won't like significantly increase it. 
but it won't it won't also decrease it so there's there's definitely a lot of diets you know um that that can can kind of just support healthy testosterone but generally won't correct if you have a problem and so consulting a provider uh correcting the underlying problem reviewing your medications these are key in terms of treating low testosterone in uh, you know and improving your health um daily exercise so when you exercise you're basically telling your body i need more testosterone so you know your your testes keeps on producing the testosterone so that's that's actually um something that that i take the time to discuss with my patients that hey if i'm giving you testosterone and you're not exercising it's just going to turn into fat so it's like giving a kid a hundred dollars it's what you do with a hundred dollars that matters so you got you know if you're going to consider replacement consider exercising and creating a regimen that you're going to be uh that, that you're going to be doing so that you're going to be using that hundred dollars kind of quite effectively um improving your sleep so sleep apnea uh, decreasing your stress if you're a huge uh, alcohol drinker you use a lot of like opioids um uh, definitely sensitive i've had a chronic pain patient in the past where um their testosterone levels are low but they had a very um compelling um uh, indication for the pain medication so we did treat them with uh testosterone replacement therapy um but you know stuff like alcohol excessive alcohol use definitely um not, you know you need to like uh lay off the uh, the alcohol use especially if you expect uh because testosterone is not a magic medication so um and it could be harmful if not used properly uh side effects acne oily skin um some people will look bulky or swollen so there's a lot of water that retains in the body uh sometimes people can urinate more often um there's a little bit of breast enlargement um if you have severe sleep apnea again usage of testosterone can worsen your severe sleep apnea you have mild may you know we we do we we consider still replacing your testosterone with, with the caveat of correcting the sleep apnea but if you have severe and it you know if 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 testosterone worsens that then you could just stop breathing and not make it through the night so it's really important you know our go- first goal in medicine any doctor premium non share do no harm so um definitely uh we need to evaluate if you have sleep apnea it can uh at to some level uh make your testicles smaller uh just because your body is not it doesn't need to produce any more testosterone um um this is a mixed bag i've had patients with testosterone replacement and their some their testicles are remain the same size i certainly have not measured it but i've had uh some individuals with smaller uh that their they they felt that their testicles have kind of um went smaller however uh this could return it, it, with the stoppage if you stop the testosterone use it can uh bounce back uh, but there's no guarantee um increased cardiovascular mortality and clotting and also skin irritation so these things are very important we need to counsel our patients who've had three heart attacks and you know wants to get back in you know and gets the testosterone replacement i've had these patients in my clinic and so um we have to measure benefits versus risks um and and certainly in, in those cases when you're getting replacement um testosterone replacement we need to check your cbc your liver function your your psa which is your prostate make sure that uh your the the psa is not too high um and also uh, if you're planning to have babies your sperm count as uh, testosterone replacement sometimes can lower actually can lower your um uh sperm count uh i think at one point in the 70s they tried to use this as a birth control and uh because of the side effects abandon it or or they propose you know so so it's not uh it definitely if you're planning to have babies don't use the testosterone controversial studies that you'll hear online and also in the media uh increase mortality with cardiovascular diseases again if you don't have cardiovascular diseases if you don't ha- and you have symptoms of low libido and and uh fatigue 
replacement with testosterone can overall improve your health. So, so th- th- that's where the, the confusion is. Um, and so not just because you're in testosterone therapy, you're going to get uh, heart disease, but uh, but if you already have heart disease, then we shouldn't be treating you with testosterone. Um, but it can uh, increase your, uh, there, I guess there's no proven increase in prostate cancer risk despite increasing your PSA. So PSA is what we measure in your blood uh, for your, it's called prostate specific antigen. And so uh, we just need to monitor that, make sure it's not too high. And, 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 uh, but, so far, all the studies have shown that there's no proven risk, significant anyway, significant increase in prostate cancer. And again, worsening of the cysting sleep apnea. That is very important as uh, every time I bring that up with a patient that's presenting for uh, low testosterone, it's, it's always a surprise. So conclusions, uh, testosterone deficiency is a real condition. It's a real condition. Nobody should be shamed for getting testosterone. Uh, um, it, it, in fact, replacing testosterone can improve your overall health. Um, it's a rational, it's ev- evidence-based. We just need to make sure we avoid it with people with heart conditions, and we need to evaluate for sleep apnea. Um, and if you're using, you know, testosterone outside of the clinics, uh, we need to be, you know, it, it's just temporary lower and and should bounce back over time and treatment with testosterone may actually increase your risk rather than give you any benefits. Um, so those are, are key in those. Uh, so that's what we have for testosterone. Um, it, it, it's, it is a well, um, uh, I, I guess it, it is, it's been more um, common in terms of in, in my clinic in the last uh, 10 years. So. Uh, what about male sexual dysfunction? So this is a sensitive topic. I actually did a review of the records I have at the vasectomy center, and I found that 5%, at least 5% of my patients in the last three years have, uh, have listed one of these conditions in their, in, in their, in their forms. It's very interesting. And, um, and, and there are a few that I've asked, you know, if they've seeked, uh, medical attention for this, and uh, the common response I have is no. So, um, so and so during this talk, I want to explain why it's important that um, that we address male sexual dysfunctions. Um, first thing I say whenever uh, a patient comes into me and say, "Hey, I have erectile dysfunctions, premature ejaculations, low libido, or failure to have orgasm," I always say, "Hey." there's always going to be an emotional component to this condition, meaning that there's always a role for a sex therapist or cognitive behavioral therapy. And as, as men, we, the, the, the idea of seeing a therapist is, is, is not a, a, a popular uh, idea in terms of treatment. However, it is really important. If we want to effectively fully treat your, your, your sexual conditions, having a sex therapist part of the, your, your healthcare team is going to be crucial in terms of, of your treatment. Um, I've had patients where, you know, the, the therapy has been effective somewhat, maybe 30, 30 to 50%. And, and when we included the sex therapist, it increased that to about 70 to 80% effectivity cure rate. So, um, it's really important um, and finding someone, it's not just a regular therapist, but someone who specializes in sex therapy is very important. So erectile dysfunction is, so is unable to maintain a firm erection to complete sexual intercourse. Well, for us to get an erection, we need blood. That we, our, our brain and our spinal cord will stimulate the nerves in the penis so that blood will flow through the blood vessels in the penis and then um, create the stiffness uh, that, we, um, that we consider as an erection. And when there's a failure in this process, that's when uh, we have an erectile dysfunction. Uh, this will show you that 50% of men 
will have either mild, moderate, or complete erectile dysfunction from ages 50 above. So as you get older, and this is again consistent with uh, healthcare because your health is, uh, they're, they're, you know, as you get older, you get more uh, blood vessel disease, you have more factors. And so this graph, it just kind of supports that idea as the older you get, you, uh, you, you have erectile dis the, the higher the risk of erectile dysfunction. And the more that as a doctor, we need to listen to our patients and in, or I listen to my patients and really like listen and, and evaluate if there's other things that are, are um, happening. So causes of low testosterone, uh, oh, sorry, of erectile dysfunction, low testosterone levels. So it kind of ties our talk from the beginning, right? Uh, prescription drugs, bl blood pressure medication, antidepressants. Um, do you have atherosclerosis? Do you have blood vessel disease? And so erectile dysfunction could be the first sign that you need to see a cardiologist um, because you uh, most guy, or some guys won't see a doctor unless it it hits them, you know, with symptoms that matter to them. And and so sometimes the erectile dysfunction can be the, you know, I, I think in the 10 years I've been practicing, there's been two individuals who have like uh, been evaluated or for um, heart disease and, and possibly, you know, who, who knows, may, may have saved their lives by, you know, um, evaluating their erectile dysfunction. So smoking, alcohol, drug use, sleep apnea, again, sleep apnea throughout this talk, sleep apnea is very important. We should probably just label this talk men's health and sleep apnea, but um, <clears throat> it, it is a, a very important cause of, of a lot of like men's health problems. So, um, and there's some really nerdy kind of scientific um, um, interesting concepts there as well. So psycholo psycholo psychological causes that might, incl um, that might cause uh, erectile dysfunction. Uh, concern about performance. If you have a new partner, you're, sometimes it, it can cause you so much anxiety that it, it, it disrupts your um, ability to have an erection. Marital relationship issues, depression, um, sexual trauma, stress, 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 stress. So that's, that's when it comes to male sexual dysfunction, stress is really important. So again, this erectile dysfunction can be the yellow canary. And so um, it was actually pretty hard for me to find this picture because uh, um, for some reason, I didn't know what a canary looked like. So I had to uh, find one of this picture. So it's relate erectile dysfunction can be the yellow canary to heart health, right? So as you know, your blood vessels, when you have diabetes, smoking, cholesterol, hypertension, um, stress enzymes that are like, you know, dis destroying the blood vessels from the inside. Um, and, and, and when the cause of your erection is from blood vessels, so it all kind of ties together, right? So uh, in fact, there's a consensus that if you are a smoker, you're of age, you have risk factors, diabetes, and, you know, hypertension, and you, and you present to me with rectal dysfunction, we need to make sure that your heart is doing well, as this could be life-saving. We could be saving your lives, or you could be saving your lives. Sorry, you could be saving your lives if you have erectile dysfunction you present to me. You could be saving your own life by, you know, following the, you know, the, this consensus panel and getting evaluated for cardiovascular health. So um, it could be life-changing. So uh, the goals of treatment, uh, definitely counseling, uh, life, as we said, uh, sex therapists, uh, medication changes, um, there's medications, vacuum devices, really finding the cost first and then later on treating. But um, in terms of treatment, we have the famous Viagra, right, or Sildenafil. Uh, we also have Cialis and Levitra. Interesting facts, um, I think uh, with with sildenafil, um, they just basically changed one of the molecules and it became Cialis or Levitra. And uh, I think someone failed in, 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 in 
um, completing the patents for for Viagra in them. So, so ba basically, with that change, it also decreases some of the side effects. But so, Danafil or Viagra is the more famous one. It's the first one. Um, it was used in the ICU uh, to for pulmonary hypertension. And so, when everybody on the ventilator started having uh, erections. Uh, somebody had the bright idea like, oh, maybe it's a good treatment for erectile dysfunction. Um, the nice thing about this medication, it's, it's easy to use. You take the pill, done. Um, problem is, if you have a fatty meal, if you have a lot of alcohol that evening, you're on a date, you have steak, you have alcohol, taking the Viagra, sometimes you have a delayed um, effect, meaning you know, you're, you're, you're on it around like midnight to one and it's not showing up. And then around 4 a.m. you get an erection. So uh, they've recently, in the last few years, they've come out with sublingual versions of this where you put it underneath the tongue. Um, I know um, some compounding pharmacies uh, uh, around the area, uh, Clark's and all that, they've, uh, 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 Kuslers, they've, they've used the sublingual versions and that can uh, kind of, escape that 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 the 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 gut and so the absorption's a lot faster whether um it's a, you know it lasts long um uh it still varies from individual to individual um sometimes it can be expensive uh but there are ways doctors have prescribed this they, they would prescribe the lower dose like 20 milligrams and generally some of the insurances will pay for the 20 milligrams versus the 50 or the 100 milligrams. So, you know, I'll just tell my patients to take three or, 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 or five and, and so we'll get the same benefit. Um, so certainly, um, personally, I don't, I don't know why they make it so expensive. I think it's a great drug. Um, side effects, sometimes it could cause a bluish tinge in your vision. So if you've ever used this medication, had those, those are temporary. It can give you a headache, uh, less so with Levitra and Cialis. Uh, um, um, uh, it can also make you lightheaded. And so if you are on medications that causes uh, vasodilations or nitrates, and so for some of you might not know what nitrates are, vas you know, vasodilatory medications, they're used for hypertension. And so if you're on those medications, taking Cialis, Viagra, or Levitra is not um, advice as you could call, you could pass out from taking uh, these medications with those. Uh, mechanical uh, treatments, this is usually with people with prostate surgery and penile nerve damage. Um, I know it looks funky, but basically what happens is it uses this chamber and it sucks through pressure, the, the blood from uh, inside your penis. Um, some people report a, a bigger or or, or larger erection, um, usually used for only 30 minutes as sometimes if you use it longer, uh, it can cause some uh, bruising and hematoma. And you use this like small tourniquet at the base of the penis that kind of like keeps that blood in there. And so sometimes there's some discomfort as well, but gen and, and it's kind of awkward because you there's a lot of planning involved before you could use this. Intracavernosal injection has been uh, well accepted in the last 20 years. I know the concept of injecting your penis with the medication is to a lot of people when they first hear about this is, is it's ridiculous. However, uh, for some of my patients who have done this and they've mastered how much medication they need to last how, how long, uh, it's been very uh, 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 fruitful and very rewarding for them. Obviously, you could cost too long of an erection, you could have bruising hematoma. If you have ne fears of needle, this is not the method for you. Um, but yeah, that, it is out there and there's, uh, there's definitely a market for this. Penile implants, uh, anybody who's undergoing gen gender reassignment or had severe trauma or, or prostate, radical prostate surgeries sometimes would benefit from a implant. Nice thing about this, it's on demand. You could like pump it. I think there's saline on the tubes and, and uh, it is an invasive procedure, uh, but it's, it's highly there, you know, uh, very effective. 
um, <clears throat> intraurethral uh, medications, not, not, not very effective. I'm not gonna discuss it too much. Basically medication you put in, in, your, in where your, your urine comes out. Um, very finicky, doesn't really quite work. Uh, should be, you know, I um, never really um, took, and, and I, I think none of my patients are, have been on this, so. Um, but from what I've read, it's not very effective. So no personal experience or, per, or experience per prescribing this uh, as most of uh, the reports are what I have. Um, other treatments, stem cells, PRP, shockwave therapy, penile barbitol rehabilitation, uh, especially with a sex therapist or pelvic PT, this could help um, some of the erectile dysfunction. Take home message. <clears throat> Each case is different. Uh, we should uh, definitely um, explore psychological and medicine, you know, medication use, um, relationship issues, and also make sure that we relate this to the overall health of the individual, whether their heart health, um, and also obviously stress is bad. So throughout this talk, you know, sleep apnea, stress is bad. Men's health is important. Those are the, the, the key topics here. Low libido, very, very briefly, lack of desire uh, that causes disruption in your life, sexual desire. So causes, again, stress, anxiety, relationship issues, low testosterone, sleep apnea. So I'm going to keep on harping this. You know, we, it, it ties all together. Adverse effects from medications. Um, lifestyle, if you use too much cannabis or alcohol, if you're in a anxiety medications such as SSRI, antihistamines, Valium, seizure medications. Obviously, as a medical doctor, we have to weigh <clears throat> the reasons you're on these medications versus you know, the low libido. And sometimes when we do that, there are other avenues that we could do to have continue treating you for those conditions and improve um, the low libido. Treatments, decrease stress, uh, resolve your relationship issues, improve your sleep, check for testosterone, and um, try to modulate some of those medications that they're on. And again, the lower the, the medication, uh, effective medication, the lower the risk of soundness. So sometimes I would um, lower the medicate, like if it's a blood pressure medication and they're controlled, they, they've lost weight and they're, they, they're exercising, uh, sometimes I'll lower some of these medications and that would improve the low libido. And so um, reaching uh, premature ejaculation. So premature ejaculation, uh, basically when you climax earlier than desired during sexual intercourse, generally below one minute, that's premature ejaculation. However, if you do not report uh, distress, then we don't need to treat you. And obviously those men won't really like seek treatment anyway. Average male, three to five minutes. That is the time uh, uh, average in terms of ejaculation. Sometimes <clears throat> when you have a new partner and you have a lot of like uh, performance anxiety, that can cause premature ejaculation, but do not be worried. The more you do it, the more that, that this will just go away naturally on its own. So when you have a new partner after an activity, it is not uncommon. It's actually quite common that you have premature ejaculation. Um, unrealistic expectations from media, pornography, friends. Um, this is actually key. This is where the sex therapist really shines uh, in terms of trying to like, you know, retrain your expectations in terms of premature ejaculation or length of time for ejaculation. Causes, again, stress, anxiety, relationship issues. This time, hyperthyroid low or high testosterone, too much testosterone or too low testosterone in medication. So um, definitely there's an endocrinology uh, component here. Um, uh, one of my favorite uh, providers, Dr. Alan Wong, I send him patients at the area clinic and he, he is very receptive to, to these patients and um, have had like a fair amount of success in terms of treating these cases. There is no current FDA approved drug for treating premature ejaculation. So um, most uh, uh, guys are like trying to look for specific medications, but there are none. Uh, so we have to treat each one individually. There are sexual therapies that can be done, retraining that can help with a sex therapist. Um, sometimes there's pelvic, uh, pelvic PT can help. Uh, 
because uh, there are signs that you, you know that you're almost climaxing and you could kind of shift and do something else so there's a lot of uh, treatment that, that, that we could use but drug treatments from a clinic from a doctor from a clinical standpoint um, there's numbing solutions you could buy over the counter that that certainly helps um, serotonin reuptake inhibitors these are used for depression and anxiety this can help with premature ejaculation and I'll tell you why later uh, Cialis and Viagra can help because it increases their um, kind of confidence uh, with the erection. So sometimes there's that psychological kind of cycle that that can, can kind of help. Tramadol is a pain medication, uh, kind of slight opioid. If, if ibuprofen and, uh, and morphine had a baby, it would be tramadol basically. So um, with the opiate crisis, we, we're not too hot in prescribing tramadol for premature ejaculation. Um, but um, there's certainly some data that supports its use, however, not FDA approved again. Uh, paroxetine, which is a cousin of fluoxetine, which is also known as Prozac, has the largest body of evidence in terms of treating um, premature ejaculation. So it is very effective. And, and I have used this to some of my patients and it helps two prongs. It, from a biochemical way, it, 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 delays ejaculation, but it also treats some of the anxiety that comes from premature ejaculation. So it's like, you know, two things, it's treating two things when it comes to premature ejaculation. The numbing medications, there are several over the counter um, that you can use. And then you basically apply this five to 10 minutes prior to intercourse. You have to wash it off. That is important because if you overdo it, you won't feel anything. And that's not, that kind of defeats the purpose. Um, I always advise my patients to wear a condom after they, you know, it, when once after they wash it off, they dry it and wear a condom as to prevent any kind of transfer to the to your partner. Um, again, tramadol. Um, there's pelvic flood therapy, oxytocin antagonists. I usually generally leave this for the endocrinologist, uh, for the for the spe uh, for the specialist and surgical denervation. This will be a little bit a nuclear option, um, kind of kind of like desensitizing the penis when so this uh, um, definitely not something that we do in clinic we, we usually send you to a, uh, a specialist for this um, uh, decreasing stress re resolving your relationship issues review your medications if you have thyroid or testosterone issues we treat those some of this medication have shown a lot some level of success they are not FDA approved so and lastly, our last topic <clears throat> is uh, delayed um, or, orgasm or ejaculation or failure to reach orgasm. So delayed meaning longer than 25 minutes. If you, it's actually quite surprising when I did the lit literary search on this that um, the consensus is about 2 to 11% of, of men do not reach orgasm or have delayed uh, orgasm longer than 25 minutes. It takes it's very difficult for them to, I don't know. Um, when uh, about several years ago, when I started treating male individuals, this is probably the, the least, um, the least, uh, the topic that has been taught the least in med, in, in our medical training. So um, definitely a lot of extra training needed here for myself uh, when, before I started treating this <coughs> causes, you, you can see the trend, stress, anxiety, relationship issues. This time, elevated prolactin levels. Prolactin in the women causes breast milk, also causes um, um, this temporary uh, um, uh, um, contraception or so that they, they're not, they, can, they can't get pregnant. Um, but for men, if you have elevated prolactin levels, we need to look for lesions in the brain if, if, if there's something that's causing, uh, so seeking an endocrinologist really helps. Hypothyroid this time, low thyroid, uh, low testosterone again, ties to the whole top, to hot topic. Alcohol and cannabis again, um, nothing against those, but if you're having symptoms and you're using alcohol and cannabis, then we need to kind of rectify those, right? It, it, but if you're not having symptoms and you're using in moderation, then, then I'm not going to approach those unless it affects you medi um, um, health-wise. And medications such as uh, for anxiety and depression, SSRI. 
there are no FDA approved again drug treatments for for this very sensitive and important topic. Um, kind of frustrating, but you know that's um, there's a lot of like financial political gain, you know, um, absence in this uh, drugs, and so <clears throat> um, it, there's no FDA approved drug treatment. Um, sexual retraining can help. There's penile vibratory stimulation, masturbation retraining, revision of fantasy. So a sex therapist will really help together with a, a pelvic uh, physical therapist. Uh, and so um, I believe IRG does have a, a um, uh, physical uh, pelvic uh, physical therapist I, I've consulted a few times. Uh, correcting your low testosterone and your high hypothyroid um, or your low thyroid levels, those are important. Um, very interesting that the drug treatments for this, bupropion, if, if I have a patient on anxiety medication, I, I sometimes will add bupropion or yohimbe. Yohimbe, you've heard that it's a natural substance. It's actually really shown really good results in terms of, of, of um, helping an individual um, reach orgasm and also, you know, wellbutrin or bupropion. With bupropion or well, wellbutrin, we need to be careful if you have a seizure disorder, this can lower your, your, your seizure threshold and you could have more seizures. So if you don't have seizures or epilepsy, bupropion is great, but if you do, probably not the best medication for you. Um, carbergolin, if you have elevated prolactin levels, you're, you're, yeah, we've treated them with carbergolin um, together with the endocrinologist, so that's helped. Oxytocin, um, I don't prescribe this as well. The endocrinologist does, but oxytocin actually is the, the biochemical component that's responsible for orgasm or increased sexual arousal. Um, they've studied this where they gave oxytocin to individuals, men and women, and they had uh, increased um, orgasm and sexual arousal. And, and so um, it does have side effects. So it's something that needs to be monitored. Um, but Yohimbe, I think, is generally available. Um, just you just have to find something that's that's um, um, you know that that your body could absorb, and it's uh, through Yohimbe. So um, treatments, decreasing stress, cognitive therapy to resolve relationship issues, review your medication, check your labs, thyroid and testosterone. Again, no FDA approved drugs, but about sixty percent uh, success rate. When, with with these uh, medications, so I, I you know that's good enough for for especially for an individual that has um, a lot of uh, distress over this uh, problem or really you know. So in conclusion, men's health it's an emerging emerging field. Even as a doctor, uh, it is something that I needed to study outside of training for several years. You know, piece piece by piece, uh, you know, kind of absorbing all these um, information. And then, kind of, um, kind of seeping through the all these misconception, the media attention, all the unverified statements of individual, it 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 really affects how your the information gets to the public and to the community. And so, trying to keep an open mind and also kind of like, um, it's hard to verify statements, but trying to uh, take information with a grain of salt. And, 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 you know, finding an expert in the field that really like has um, um, experience with these. Um, there is a market for men's health. And so there are financial gain for some individuals to uh, um, um, exaggerate and so on the, these effects. However, um, men's health is very important. Low testosterone is very important. Erectile dysfunction is important. Premature ejaculation, all of these it ties into your overall health and we need to um, uh, uh, identify this and consult your doctor if you have any of these symptoms. Um, stress is bad for you and uh, um, and uh, that um, kind of concludes the talk for this afternoon. I hope I'm able to communicate the messages effectively and, and if you have any questions, you, you can always email me. My email address is down below, jabano at, at topgunnw. Oh, wait, sorry. It's, wrong. it's jabano at vasectomycenter.com. Sorry, this um, uh, I, I kind of like an old address. So it's, uh, it's actually the same name at vasectomycenter.com. Um, or you could call us in the clinic and we're happy to 
to, to, to see you. So, um, any questions? Um, I think uh, five minutes before uh, seven. I think uh, thank you for attending and uh, um, I don't see any questions, but um, uh, I think it's not too late to, to catch the, the Seahawks game. So if you have any questions, again, you could always email us at jabano or info at vasectomycenter.com. That, that might be easier to remember or call us in the clinic. Visit the website, vasectomycenter.com. Oh, there's one question. It says here, I had my prostate removed five years ago. I'm one of that 5% that have ED problems. ED pills have had little or no effect. Is there anything that may help uh, my situation? Yes. And so um, in some of my patients, I, we've used the, uh, the, the vacuum device. It, 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 you have to try it out first, see if it's right for you. Um, and then if that doesn't help, then we may try to do the injections. Uh, both offer some level of discomfort. Um, radically, you, you can go for the nuclear option and get the pump, but that's too invasive a procedure. That's not something that I would, um, that's kind of like the last resort. I would try to pump and I, be, uh, I have successfully had Medicare and Medicaid pay for the pump. Um, so uh, you could, you know, coordinate with your doctor or with us. We, you know, we could try to get Medicare and Medicaid, um, especially when you have that prostate uh, surgery history, um, they, they, will, they will pay for it um, um, from, from my experience anyway. So I can't, you know, um, but um, it's an option. Um, you just have this tourniquet in the bottom. So that's really important. Does vasectomy affect men's health? Um, so vasectomy, any procedure will affect um, uh, an overall the men's health. However, vasectomy has very low risk to a male individual. Um, you know, about 99% of my patients have no overall uh, effect in the men's health. I know there's been some data in the 70s that showed that hey, it might increase prostate cancer, and then it was it was it was disproven in the 80s, disproven in the 90s, and then it resurfaced again early 2000s. And then it's been disproven again. Um, but the general consensus, and I'm part of a huge forum in terms of vasectomy, these are academics. So they're, they're not incentivized by any drugs or, or, or business or this academics. The general consensus is there's still no studies to show that it increases risk for prostate cancer. So, um, and, and some of these uh, studies are shown, you know, uh, have like some biases that they've um, identified. And so uh, in terms of affecting men's health, um, there's no significant uh, effect, a uh, vasectomy effect in terms of men's health anyway. Um, any other question? Is there any testosterone supplement you can take if you feel you're low prior to see a doctor professionally? Um, so the... The best thing to do if you don't want to see your doctor, which, by the way, I, I would really advocate that you go see your, your provider who, you know, has knowledge in terms of testosterone, um, is to, you know, identify the factors that might be causing your low testosterone. Are you having a sedentary lifestyle, right? So if you don't need, need to run a marathon right away, you could just do minor runs, doing exercises 10, 15 minutes but do it daily. So as your body gets used to that activity, your body tells you, your body adapts and your body tells you, hey, let's produce more testosterone because uh, uh, this individual is exercising more and lowering your fat content and also um, in terms of, um, you know, trying to see if you have sleep apnea, if you're drinking a lot of alcohol. So those are things that you could use to kind of increase your testosterone levels without seeing a doctor. Um, uh, you know, but in terms of supplements, um, I, I know again, there's a market for this, so I'd be a little bit careful. Um, I, I always tell my patients whether it's grown in the backyard or made in the laboratory, 
the same things, characteristic, uh, there's an effect, there's a benefit, there's a side effect, and there's interactions. So you got to be careful with whatever you take as, as, as you might not know that there's a side effect. Um, does vasectomy affect men's health in any positive ways? Thank you. Yes, I think uh, if you have a vasectomy, then your wife becomes happier, especially when she's done making, having babies and suddenly, you know, there's less stress. Um, in terms of uh, clinically, I, there is no proven um, uh, physical or, med you know, uh, physiologic effects in terms of having a vasectomy. Uh, I would say more psychological in some cases. And also, you know, I, I do medical missions doing vasectomies and, and, um, in some cases, there's more um, there's more resources for the existing children, and uh, and you have a happier life, and and that indirectly kind of improves your overall health. So, but in in a nutshell, not directly. So, any other questions? Um, oh, by the way, on those supplements, testosterone supplements, I had a case uh, several years ago of a patient with. Uh, um, was taking ginkgo biloba. And so the patient, we didn't know this, but the patient presented with very low platelets, was bleeding and everything. No, everything, all the tests were negative. And we found out that um, after like much reading that, you know, the medication, he, he the supplement he was taking actually deranged his platelets. So, and, and so that's like kind of like a, a lesson uh, to, again, there are benefits to these natural medications. I'm not saying there's none, but we have to be aware of the side effects as well and the interactions and everything. And so um, supplements, just gotta be careful in what you take and gotta have a, um, definitely research it a little bit better. Um, anything else? Again, for the, for the, uh, for the pump, that's something that uh, that uh, insurances generally um, cover. So uh, if 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 it, you're interested, that's something that you know you could address with your doctor as well. And uh, any other questions? Again, thank you again for having me. And uh, if you have any follow-up questions, please uh, feel free to email us, info at vasectomycenter.com uh, or call us in the clinic, 425-395-0773. So, uh, and go Hawks. Thank you.